it's going to be a little bit of a long off season for the 49ers dealing with the sting of that Super Bowl loss and then just days later they let go of their defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes. Here's what Kyle Shanahan had to say after the firing. Bringing in Steve who was unbelievable and is how loyal he was and him trying to do it and but it just ended up not being um, the right fit and it's like I you know, it hurt for me to do this, but that's exactly why I had to. When you have some good players who have played at a high level and done it a certain way, um, I'm not just trying to change that. You know, I lean towards trying to keep them doing similar stuff that they've been very good at that's got us very far. Um, but I have to make sure that um, I find the right person who's capable of leading our group in that way that the standard of how we have done it and that the belief that we'll continue to get better at it um, I believe in with whoever I choose to do this for us. So that was 11 days ago and still no defensive coordinator in San Francisco. Only one team in the last 50 plus years has lost the Super Bowl and then won it the very next season. Of course, it was the Patriots mm -hmm. in 2018. So that's mm -hmm. what the Niners are up against, Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how harsh will this Super Bowl hangover be for the Niners because Kyle Shanahan having experienced similar losses before and then it happened again and it seemed they were so close. Peter, how are they going to get over this? I mean, all the Tylenol in the world won't help this. I think it's over. brutal. Yeah. I think it's brutal. It's brutal because the season lasted so long. This is the first time the Niners have lost a Super Bowl after the extended 18-week schedule. So they, they lose and then you have obviously, you know, President's Day week and then we're, and we're right back at the combine, but I don't know if I'm stealing any secret. I, Kyle Shanahan doesn't go to the combine anymore. Those Niners, that Niners coaching staff doesn't do the combine. That's not what they do. They, a lot of these teams say, just send the front office, get us the tape. We'll interview guys when they come to our building. Like, and they don't have a defensive coordinator. They don't. I feel like they're so far behind the eight ball than other teams that have been getting ready for the combine, getting ready for the draft, getting ready for free agency. They have their full coaching staff loaded up. Um, I think this is going to be a brutal hangover for the Niners, and yet. They have the players that yeah. have been there and done that. I saw Juszczyk had had a post this week, something about you know it's not it's a it's a delay. It's not an over. It's not a, it's just a delay. He called it like it. They have that mental wherewithal, but I think from the organizational standpoint, to be up ten again mm -hmm. on that team in the Super Bowl, we're going to be talking about it all off season. I think it is a bitter pill, and the fact you now need to replace a defensive coordinator and maybe. You know, I, I came out guns blazing that first week. I was like, go hire Belichick, and yeah. I meant it. And then I was like, or Brandon Staley. It sounds like if you're taking all this time and you're still putting, you know, thinking about it 11 days later, it sounds more like an internal candidate is probably the lo likely guy. Either way, to not have a defensive coordinator as we head towards March and to have to finish the season so late compared to your contemporaries, I think it's a real deal, and I think the entire organization is feeling this right now. And, um, I don't trust anyone more than Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch to get these guys going and to get it back up, and maybe it's not that significant, but they are behind the eight ball right now, and gosh, if they had won, it would have felt like the world was off their shoulders, but now it's even heavier on it. Without a doubt, and you said an internal candidate, and I said it when he let Wilkes go because the things he was mentioning of having players already in-house and an expectation and a standard that they've already set, it makes the most sense to get somebody, if it's not in-house, somebody that maybe has left that knows what they do there. And you talk about the hangover. I feel like for them and that organization, you start to look around and you're like, well, is it just not meant to be for this group of men to be able to put it together mm -hmm. and win a Super Bowl? You mentioned being up 10 again in the Super Bowl. We've already mentioned the conference losses that they had, that they have been up in those games. So for Shanahan and his crew of trying to figure out a way to get over this thing, it makes it so tough. And I think even the aftermath of the Super Bowl, specifically winning versus losing it, we're watching Chris Jones at a parade talking about, I'm coming back to Kansas City. I'm going to be back. Because that's the joy that you have when you've won that game and you've gone through that entire journey. If you mentioned those 18 weeks and then the playoffs, and now it all accumulates to a Super Bowl. And you win that game. And on the other side, after the game for the 49ers, we see Brandon Ayuk talking about, you know, if he's he's under contract for the following year, but doesn't know with everything going on, going into his final year, if he's going to be there. And then family, that's the exact aftermath of losing that game, of what you're seeing walking off the field as the confetti's falling, knowing that you've fallen short. On the other end, 
They don't have any big, big name free agents. There are some guys, Javon Kenlaw, Chase Young, you've made that trade for. Donald, the backup quarterback, he's a free agent. But for the most part, they return all of their guys in a division where the Cardinals are resetting, the Seahawks just got a brand new uh, head coach, the Rams obviously are going to be better with that young team they have. But the 49ers still have a really good chance to be a good football team next year. It's just how fast they get over this thing. Hangovers. I gave them up 12 years ago. Uh, good for you. It's a good point. Uh, you know, the fact that the 49ers uh, are going to be in the same situation they were a year ago as they were going into this season, I, I think speaks volumes, and I think it's a big ri reason why Kyle Shanahan has been able to kind of take his time with all of this. I don't think it's a great look that Steve Wilkes is gone, and he was fired after maybe having one of the best statistical years on defense that the 49ers have had. And then the fact that you probably win that game and he's a Super Bowl champion defensive coordinator if you don't have a guy try to, you know, McLeod tries to jump on the ball rather than try to pick it up. Um, there's so many things that you can look at in that, that team. that You take the ball in overtime, all this stuff. But there was something wrong ph philosophically there. And that's what's talked about when you hire a defensive coordinator. So if that philosophy changed during the season, then I understand it. I understand it. You saw him call the timeout in uh, the fourth quarter when you saw zero blitz coming. You know, this was not what Kyle Shanahan wanted. So there was a philosophy problem there, and now he's going to move on. Your guys' point around in-house, yes. I think Chris Kasurik, defensive uh, tackle coach, unbelievable uh, X's and O's guys. I think his name could be brought up here as the guy that elevates. Why? What's been the best part of the San Francisco 49ers over the last five years? It's been that defensive line. Not this year. Not this year. They were banged up a little bit. Armstead came back, and they were a different football team in the Super Bowl. They really were, I felt. Um, so that's a name that, if you want to look in-house, uh, I think it's a guy. He started at the very bottom, right? He started with me at West Texas A&M. All right. Coaching wow. at the Division II level. And I always knew it when I saw him. Wow. He knew what he was doing. He's bounced all the way to the Cowboys, Detroit Lions. Been with the 49ers with one of the best. He's a guy that has earned the opportunity, and that may just be where that's they awesome. go when it's all said and done. He's, so. viewed, he's viewed as the best defensive line coach in football. I think that's pretty much understood. As it's just how, He's never expressed, hey, I want to be a defensive coordinator. He's always been happy with that. Do you think he would want to take that jump up? Because for years, he's always been the guy, and he's always been like, I'm good here. Yeah, yeah. everybody says that, but behind the scenes, they want to be the guy. They want to, they want to coordinate a defense. Like, in his mind, he thinks with what they have in terms of talent – well, some of my ideas here, I mean, we could be incredibly special. Everybody feels that way. I get it. I've talked to many coaches who say, I love the day when I just could go in my office and draw up X's and O's and didn't have to talk to anybody or do anything else and just do the thing that I do well. There's something to be said for that. But, you know, when you coach at the highest possible level like this, you talked to Spags last week. Yeah. He wants to be a head coach. He wants to be a head coach. He wants another opportunity. Everybody wants that chance to be at the next level, to do something different to be seen as that, to be seen in a, in a place where a defensive tackle coach sits in the background and maybe isn't as seen as he may want to be because of what he can do as a coach. Well, the Niners, they wanted Vic Fangio last year as their defensive coordinator, and that didn't work out. So the mismatch in philosophies with Steve Wilkes and their system, you kind of, like, felt all season long that the players and Steve Wilkes, like, at least, like, the stars weren't really on the same page together. And Steve Wilkes' background, he's, his focus is DBs. And that's not really how it works in that system there. It's more of, like, a Seattle cover three. And so, in my mind, I would love to see Pete Carroll cross enemy lines and Ooh, go over I like to that. the Niners. I feel like that would be kind of a fun wrinkle. Maybe it would help the hangover. I don't know. But Steve Wilkes, I mean, his defense allowed three points in the oh, first half. Yeah. 19 points in regulation against one of the greatest quarterback head coach duos maybe ever. I mean, Tom Brady and Belichick, of course, they are cemented. Yeah. But Hey, like absolutely. Mahomes and Reed absolutely give them competition. And I think that all of this, when the Niners have to pay Brock Purdy, then the situation becomes very real mm -hmm. when they are having to make decisions about Brandon Ayuk and how how are they going to make this work with a potential cap situation. Like, when you have skill position players, if the Niners are in the situation that the Chiefs are in, do you see the Niners being able to pull off a Super Bowl win if they can't keep these players around Brock Purdy? Because Brock Purdy, right now, they have on league minimum. So it's nice for them now, but I'm not sure how they can move forward and how that will look. Real quick, I, I'm friends with a lot of Niners fans. Like, there's this feeling of, like, 
that was this it was it was right there it, like, it this was, was the yeah there's, there's there's something to the yeah. point of uh, of having the opportunities and not getting it everybody's going to be looking for a job if you can't get the championship it just is no matter how great you are if you keep getting the opportunities you don't get it done uh -huh. everybody's going to be out of a job and everyone's looking for a job